Hello, it is great to have you in Sunday School uh, online. We're beginning, let's see, just around 11 o'clock, close to 11 o'clock. We hope that you have had a good day. And those of you who can, we hope you will be in Sunday School tomorrow. But if you do not have Sunday School, this can be your Sunday School and you may can even find some others online too. But it's good to be with you tonight. We're trusting the Lord to help us with this lesson tonight. The title is The Good Shepherd. And it's hard to believe, but we are absolutely to lesson number 12. Only have one more in this quarter, which will be next Sunday. Our central truth is Jesus Christ is the good shepherd who cares for his sheep. The title of our lesson is The Good Shepherd. And of course, the good shepherd we're talking about is Jesus Christ. He is a great, great, wonderful shepherd. All right, Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 16 is our key verse. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. That's from the King James Version. All right, our lesson objectives. We want to make sure we know what they are. We will understand that Christ, our Good Shepherd, is the true and perfect example of godly leadership. We will trust Jesus in Jesus to be the Good Shepherd of our lives. Yes, He is a great Good Shepherd. All right, and then we will seek to exhibit Christ-like justice through our words and actions. You know, that's, that's, as we would say, a tall order, but it's important that we do that. One of the best ways we will do that is daily being in communion with the Lord uh, by prayer and reading His Word and knowing what He said. That's how we know exactly what to do. He is our great example. So we're trusting the Lord to help us and guide us right now as we teach this lesson. All right. In the previous lesson, we learned that God holds everybody account, uh, individually accountable. Though they may live in a wicked, harsh, horrible society, we are responsible ourselves. Rather than just give in and just well, what everybody else does, whatever they do, we, we just do it. We are expected as children of God to stand true. The Lord does guide us and help us to do that. It's not always easy. And the easiest thing to do a lot of times, a simple thing, what we do is just to rationalize that you really don't have to do it that way. You can, on the outside, act like you are, but on the inside, that you're really, you're really being true. Well, it doesn't operate that way. Uh, we have to speak up and stand for truth, uh, no matter what the consequences are. And the Lord does tell us in His Word that all that will live godly will, will suffer persecution. We will suffer, and it will be persecution. So we need we know that he 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 didn't uh, he didn't keep that from us. He let us know that ahead of time. That is not to frighten us. That's not to run us away. But it is that we know that we need to be prepared. And he tells us how to be prepared. And he faced it. We know he faced a terrible persecution to the point of death. So he knows what it is. Negligent shepherds were condemned. The wicked shepherds were described and judged. And, Read in Ezekiel chapter 34, 1 through 9. But Jesus said, when someone has been given much, much will be required in return. So those are that serve in, in positions of privilege and power have a responsibility to use those services properly and to be kind, to be considerate, and they're not to be uh, floor mats and just, it's not that, but, to, but they are to be polite and courteous and do, do the work of the Lord in the way like Jesus did. Imagine how Ezekiel felt when God gave him a message to prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Now, it was one thing, you know, he'd been talking about the people. You can go ahead and stand true no matter what others do. You can stand true. But now to turn to these shepherds, that was something. Now, we're not talking about the shepherds of the, of the literal sheep. But we're talking about the shepherding of, the, of, of God's flock. And they were often sometimes called uh, shepherds and it mentioned in our lesson brought this out that in the ancient world outside of the Bible the term shepherd was often a royal title applied to kings and so you know sometimes with a pastor they'll say our shepherd you'll hear that term sometimes well here was Ezekiel what was this like when he was told uh, some of these shepherds these leaders they're the ones that need to be dealt with because they're wicked and so they and he was going to describe to them exactly the things that, that they had done so we need to understand that the Lord really, I mean, when you accept a position of leadership, and that's not to run from it because the Lord uh, has called and he's chosen us and he wants us sometimes to lead and we'd rather just sit back and do nothing. But when the Lord calls us to lead something, we need to fall on our face before him and trust him and believe him because he has a plan 
and God wants to help us. He's always there to help us, not to just sit back and watch us just flounder around as though we don't know what, what's going on. God will give us direction. His word gives us direction, and he gives us specific direction for the specific situations that we are in. I truly believe that. It mentioned here in, in the Bible about a, a well-known ancient Babylonian king named Hammurabi. And it, this man was really known for the code. It's called the Code of, of, of Hammurabi. I had not known of this until a while back. I heard a man tell he'd learned about it. And he had. you can actually go online and get the book and get this code of uh, Hammurabi. It was considered... Uh, the, the first really outstanding code of, of ethic of law and so that's just something you might want to look up uh, that Hammurabi is spelled H-A-M-M-U-R-A-B-I and I think he got it on I believe it was Amazon but anyway all right the Lord has said uh, he said to David you think of David he was a person that was called on to be the king and later on in our lesson it talks about that he was a man after God's own own heart and then you think of how how he, he failed in so many ways. And so you see the difference in, in we're not here to condemn David because we, we're just acknowledging the fact that he really did not live up all the time the way that he should. That he had his heart after the Lord. But there was time he failed miserably. But then when you compare it with our good shepherd thinking of Jesus Christ, there's absolutely no comparison hardly how he never failed. He always did the right thing. But, uh, you know, when we, the 23rd Psalm is a blessing to us. And the, the Lord used David. And when David really was close to the Lord and let the Lord use him, just think of the marvelous, like just miraculous things oftentimes that, that he did. And how in many, uh, most of the Psalms uh, that he, he wrote, and some of them have were such a blessing, except, uh, especially uh, Psalm 23 has been a, a standby for many, many people. But uh, as shepherds, each king... The kings, they, they were the shepherds, the people, and they were to be they were responsible for the spiritual and temporal welfare of God's people. And the title said often applied to the ruling class of ancient Israel and included the royal bureaucracy, magistrates, tax collectors, and priests. These individuals were taxed with also being just. They were not always being just. They were taking more than they should. They were treating people with great disrespect. And so he was talking to bringing them to task. That wasn't an easy thing. You know, um, Ezekiel was maybe, he wonder if he could have even been endangering his life. I don't know. But it was, it was not an easy thing to do, but the Lord had given him that, that will and that courage. He had inspired him and helped him that he would stand for truth no matter what. So that's the way he wants us to do. The behavior of the Israelite ruling class was often characterized by injustice and oppression. The Lord hates that. Uh, one of the things that was said to them, and in, in, uh, it's talked about how that they said they were they were like. Uh, similarly, Ezekiel accused them of fattening themselves at the public trough while the sheep went hungry, went poor and hungry. And he carried on. He said, "What sorrow awaits you, shepherds, who feed yourselves instead of your flock." He's telling them, you're not going to get by with this. And so I'm telling you this now so you can get it right. That's the thing that the Lord always has in mind. It's not to condemn and criticize, but it's to get us back on track, back on course, to make it to heaven, to and to be the good leader and to be a blessing and not to be a hindrance. And, and you know, as we know, nobody wants to be wants to be oppressed. Nobody wants to be beat down. So why would a person be that way? Uh, they, it does happen, though. We know that. Uh, but he said, You have not taken care of the weak. You have not tended the sick or bound up the injured. You have not gone looking for those who have wandered away and are lost. Instead, you have ruled them with harshness and cruelty. That's from Ezekiel 34 and 4. Uh, in the book that's written by Philip Keller, he has so many books that he, he was a... a shepherd and he's written some wonderful books about being a shepherd and how you look after them and he's talked about how that he always took care of his sheep and the, his pastures he made sure his pastures were very good and they were so green and lush but how that he had in one instance he mentioned that he had a neighbor that was an awful shepherd that really did not care for his sheep and how that those sheep would be stretching their necks as far as they could over to try to get into the the lush green grass that his sheep enjoyed. But he said those poor sheep, they were just suffering with hardly anything to eat. 
but yet he said their shepherd would not in any way try to help them. You know, our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he's a good shepherd. He always provides for his people. But it's important that we understand, as, as Ezekiel was telling them, negligent shepherds will be judged. And it said, uh, James, Jesus' half-brother, warned his readers that not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. It is important to understand that rather than take a, that stance of it being over somebody we ought to understand we're going to face god just like anyone else if you're a leader or not a leader we're all going to face the lord and i, I tell you what i a pastor used to always say where they say somebody if, if when you if you meet god he said we're all going to meet god i just want to meet him in peace those in positions of trust are held to a higher standard than others and to mis misuse that would mean that god would hold us accountable we would be responsible this was true for these leaders in, in Israel. God pledged to hold those who had neglected his people responsible for their actions. You know, sometimes it just looks like nothing will ever happen. You see things that go on and on and on for so long, and you wonder how long. But I, I don't know all the details about it, but oftentimes it's the Lord giving time. He's giving time for a person to repent. And then the people that are being abused, uh, it's... It's a time that you, that we can really be strengthened instead of being beat down. That's what happens sometimes. We feel like we're just beaten down. But to be able to come into really a total a close communion with the Lord and understand that our life is still hid with Christ in God, no matter what we are facing, and through this time that the Lord will help us if we can power through these things, not by ourselves, by the word of the Lord, and we grow stronger and stronger. And then suppose the time comes that the Lord would put you in a place of responsibility or me in a place of responsibility then we should have compassion and know better how how to treat people be kind and considerate i i have known people that they were wonderful people until they, they took a position of leadership i'm thinking of a person that i knew on a job that when they became except were put in a position of leadership became absolutely absolutely one of the cruelest people and and lost their job before it was over, over with because the cruelty became known and I thought what and they it was a Christian person that and I know the people there had little to no respect for her and then when it became a leader it was unbelievable it was awful it was an awful thing so it's something we need to be uh, understand that we could be the reason that a person doesn't want to be a Christian and now we say well at the same time you know it can't be just because of that one person God's word speaks we, we can't let somebody keep us out of heaven no what no way do we want to do it but at the same time we do have a responsibility to live a righteous and pure life before the lord and we can do it with his help and grace also it talked about in our lesson in part two wicked sheep described and judged not only the leaders were, were wicked but you had some of the sheep uh, that were were cruel to to others to the other sheep well the lord looks at that too and it says so a wealth is a blessing that can become a curse if we use it wrong and mistakenly believe that riches grant us the right to do as we please you may not be uh, in leadership but if you're one of the sheep and and that's it's a sad thing when you would think because you have some money that you could uh, be unkind that you could hinder people that you could be uh, it's, it's an awful I, you know it's hard to imagine to do that especially as a child of God we can't do that a child of God we have got to line up and give our life to the Lord we want to be like him be kind and be considerate and if we have done that thing that is wrong then we need to totally surrender give our life to the Lord come back to the Lord and make wrongs right that you have to go to the people and you have to apologize and absolutely people will respect the person I mean I've respected leaders who have uh, any those who have done wrong that when they have, have acknowledged it i was wrong and you know it, it's amazing how that how the healing can occur and we probably each one somewhere along the line we have had to apologize to somebody for something and but this is a, a terrible thing that can happen if a you take a leader of a person gets as we say set in their ways and they never apologize for things that they've done wrong that's a very dangerous dangerous thing because the thing, if, if you, you, can, you can become self-deceived. And in the scripture, there's one place that says self-deceived and feeding on ashes. That's a dangerous thing. So when, when we are wrong and the Lord convicts us, 
and, and, and you just reading his word, it, it can convict us. But I'll tell you what, I don't want to just sear my conscience and go on and, and or be deceived, be self-deceived and lose out with the Lord. So one of the day, the, the Lord uh, promised to judge, separating the sheep from the goats. And it mentions in our lesson, translated literally the verse states between the rams and the male goats. Okay, so Jesus told us at the end of the age, he will separate the sheep from the goats. He explained that the sheep and goats are differentiated by the way they treated others. Oh, it's important how we treat others, is it not? And we know how it is, how, how, we, how we are when somebody treats us correctly and somebody that does not. So we all know about this. Let's just do the right thing. So Ezekiel, uh, th through Ezekiel, God accused the goats of taking the best of the pastures for themselves. And he said, because you're rich, you're hoarding all these things, and yet you're taking the best farmland, and you're leaving what's left over to the poor. Instead of, you should help them. That they're, You should be doing that, that it is right. And I tell you what, uh, the Lord is looking out. He's looking out for the poor. He looks out for everybody. But when he sees the rich opposing and being cruel and mistreating, when, you know, when the Lord has blessed us, whatever he's blessed us with, we, we want to we want to share with others and we want to have a, a, a compassionate spirit I, I was thinking of some friends and in fact I, I intended to write them and I still intend to I think they they pastored a, a church and I saw they had some of the most uh, pitiful people that were very poor and all and the compassion and concern they always showed treat those people with the utmost respect always so respectful loved them dearly and, and always they made such an impression on me when they had much more than the others. The Lord had blessed them. They had been faithful, and they honored and blessed others. And so that was a good example. We never know how many people are watching us, and, and they see what we're doing, if we're doing right or doing wrong. And so God's heart is for the poor, and he takes note of any injustice that's perpetrated against them. We will be held accountable. And Ezekiel cried out, Isn't it enough for you to drink uh, the clear water from, uh, for yourselves? Must you also muddy the rest with your feet? It just seemed like they just couldn't do enough evil. Uh, just because because they had money, because they could. Some people, because they have authority, will, will do things. They will have that idea. Well, uh, when you get to this position, then you can do this like I'm doing it. Or you can do it your way, but right and some people will feel like because I've been here this long, I, I can do what I want to. I, I worked with a man, I went, was around a man one time on a job that he felt like because he had been there X amount of years, in fact, it, you know, it was quite a long time, that he didn't have to go but what the law said. In, in, in the, actually, in the city code, well, he, he did. But he felt like because of his years of service, well, that's not right. The fat sheep judged. It is tempting to ignore the needs around us or make excuses for a lack of concern. But it talks in our lesson, it says, in the scripture said, not God knows our hearts and he protects the vulnerable. We've already been talking about this. He was mentioning here the fat sheep, the one that had so much. God would hold accountable those that would not help in any way reach out to what was known as the scrawny sheep, the ones that were in such poor shape. God cared for those people. He reaches out with such compassion. And he always, all the people in the Bible that he reached out to, it was all, it was all, all levels of society, the rich, the, the, the middle class, and, and, and the, the, the very poor. He was always reaching out. It wasn't just a certain group of people. It was all. He, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that was whether rich, poor, in between, you know, he loved us. We, he loved us so much. He wants us to be saved from our sins, be cleansed and made whole. So always we should imitate Christ's heart of compassion by defending those who are vulnerable to exploitation, including, but, but listen to this, but not limited to the unborn, the aged, and infirm, and the disabled. And we should never acquiesce in a system that allows people to be treated as expendable. We need to hear that God's word. That is what God's word is telling us. In Romans chapter 15 and verse 1. Those who are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Let's remember, think of the unborn. That God has a special plan for each life. So we don't want to take that life. 
The good shepherd described, Isaiah promised that when the time came for God to come to the rescue of his scattered sheep, his scattered, his scattered people in exile in Babylon, he would feed his flock like a shepherd. He would take care of them. You know, the good shepherd, he will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. This promise stood in profound contrast to Israel's earthly shepherds. They were not doing the right thing. They were not. And in reading Philip Keller's book, something that made a, a distinct impression on me was when he told the importance of the shepherd and he would go out and he would check his sheep regularly because sometimes the sheep, but they would maybe be really fat. And as he said, especially uh, if, if it was a time close to when they were going to be sheared, well, they would have this, uh, they'd have this very heavy, uh, you know, they'd have so much of, of their the wool on them that they would be so heavy and all that they would actually roll over and they would be on their in their back and if they rolled over on their back and they could not get back up the way their their system their their digestive system is they would literally die and he said how that uh, it was important that you would go and check on those sheep and get them back on their feet lest they die and so this is something that I think is children of God sometimes we are being maybe going through a deep battle a uh, hardship something we're going through a, a trial of our faith and it is so important that we, that we, and we, but we know this, the good shepherd is there to help us. And it should be, we should be people that, that we're reaching out to others and those that are having, going through a, a trial, a, a test in their life. They may have some circumstance through no fault of their own, but we should be there to assist them and help them with the word of the Lord and help them with our kindness and compassion to get them righted again. We've all, we've all been there at some point in life. I like this. It said the description is not unlike the good shepherd of whom Jesus said after he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know him. They know his voice. He calls him by name. He knows us by name. He reaches out. His good plans are never at the mercy of evil men. And God's good plans are never at the mercy of evil men. He will always see them through, and his chosen people can rest in the knowledge that whatever may befall them, their future is not dependent on luck or circumstances, but it's rather the hands of our good, good shepherd. That is a good point. So the scripture described King David as a man after God's own heart. We mentioned this earlier, but he was a man after God's own heart, but he had failed many ways. This Messiah that was coming, that was being promised here, was being prophesied about. He would lay down his life for the sheep. We can rejoice that he was the perfect shepherd. He, he loves us and cares for us so very much. And this is one thing that David could not do. But we have this perfect shepherd. We are so thankful for him. Beginning in Ezekiel 34, 23, the, the prophet proclaimed another truth to God's people. The Lord would raise up from the house of David one who would serve as the shepherd for his people. And that's exactly what he did. He promised and made that promise to David and he carried it forth. And the New Testament makes it clear that this promise is fulfilled in Jesus, the good shepherd who sacrificed his life for us. When you read what, our, what Jesus went through, the price he paid, it touches our heart. It touches our heart to the point of when we, rather than just read over it, if we will read it carefully and ask the Lord to help us to really get hold of these truths. It, it's really something how it touches us. Ezekiel 34 foresees a day in the future when Israel would not have to live in fear of aggressive and warlike Gentile nations. The day was going to come. Things were going to be totally different. They would enjoy security and safety in the land, free from the oppression of foreigners. God is always looking out for his people. He tells there would be a time that the wolf and the lamb will live together. A day is coming when the strong will no longer threaten the weak, and the weak need not fear the strong. Isn't that a day that we're looking forward to? You know, when evil is gone. Just imagine, we face evil all the time, but when evil is, is gone, forever gone, and then we are forever with the Lord, worshiping Him with, uh, without, you know, any, any kind of restraints of any kind, just totally, freely worshiping our wonderful Lord. Human leadership, we, we end with this. What is God saying to us? Because human leadership is prone to fall short in some way, we must put our ultimate trust in Christ rather than people. He is the good shepherd, the one who will always do what is best for the sheep. How do we know what the good shepherd's leadership looks like? 
all we have is to read, as I said, his wonderful word. And we read, I mean, all the time that he was here, how he was ministering and doing always the right thing, filled with love, always putting himself out. He wasn't trying to run away from helping. He was always there quick to help. How we appreciate him. Both those who are leaders and those who are followers are called upon to imitate the good shepherd who sacrifices his life for the sheep, John 10 and 11. Oh, what a great shepherd. I'm so thankful that I know him and that he knows me. I want to be like him. I want to love him and worship him and serve him all the days of my life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And we would love to have you in our services if you do not have a church home. And that is at 921 3rd Street in Elgin, Oklahoma. If you do have a home church, we hope you will be there. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And we'll see you again late next Saturday night. The Lord willing. Goodbye.